Hello guys, welcome to my Sennheiser Momentum Truly Wireless Review. These are Sennheiser's first Truly Wireless earphones and have garnered a pretty good reputation, especially for their sound quality. And uh, I'm just gonna share my subjective uh, impressions on this product. So first off, the price. Their MSRP is roughly $300, but since they've been out for quite a while, you can find them um, on sale for cheaper than that. Build quality and comfort. I would say the build quality is pretty nice. I do like this uh, fabric charging case. It does have a very nice elegance and class to it. The lid mechanism feels relatively sturdy. It's not the best. The earbuds themselves are a dense plastic with the outer touch control surface area being a sort of like uh, metallic aluminum. It's a very nice, classy, understated uh, design. These go right in quite simply. It's magnetic. And the case will begin charging them as well. So comfort-wise, these do have an assortment of tips. You can get some aftermarket tips from Comply, which will give you like a foam insert. But the standard tips that do come pre-installed on the Momentum True Wireless are pretty comfortable. Uh, they insert very easily. You get a medium, large, and small ear tip. Downside to me in terms of the tip selection is the fact that the Momentums has a very short nozzle. So you can't just really get any aftermarket ear tips and throw them on there. You're kind of limited to the tips that are actually made for the momentums themselves. So moving over to the features and the supported Bluetooth codex. Bluetooth codex support on this is pretty good. You get your typical SBC, which is standard. You get AAC for uh, Apple devices. You get uh, AppDex, and you also get AppDex low latency. So if your device supports AppDex low latency, you will get a very, um, in sync experience in terms of like if you're using these to play games or watch movies and tv shows of that nature aptex low latency will be very good for those scenarios however the default codex which is the aac and the aptex that i use depending on if i'm using my iphone or my uh my android devices they relatively perform well in terms of youtube or netflix playback i don't really notice any um jarring audio lip sync issues so take that for what it's worth. Uh, Feature-wise, in terms of interactive controls, it uses a touch panel on both earpiece. Uh, the right earpiece is responsible for activating the ambient sound. So if you double tap, it'll activate the ambient sound. The ambient sound on the Momentums is actually pretty nice. It has a natural uh, engagement to how you interact with your environment. So it pretty much feels a lot like you don't have anything on as opposed to a lot of other ambient sound implementations. It sounds more like it's being forced into the microphone. So you get this kind of like artificial boosted whooshing sound. If you press it once, it'll activate your voice assistant. So it's dependent on what device you have. If you have an Android, it's probably gonna pull up Google Assistant or if you're using a Samsung, Bixby, but you can set those parameters within the Android interface. On iOS devices, or if you're using a Mac, it'll bring up Siri. Uh, if you press and hold the right earpiece, it'll raise the volume. I don't really like that because you can't really get a controlled, concise uh, adjustment. You most likely will go over or under the volume that you want, but hey, at least you do have the ability to adjust the volume. On the left earpiece, if you tap once, it'll play and pause. If you double tap, it'll skip to the next song. And if you triple tap, it will go to the previous song. If you press and hold, it'll reduce the volume. There's other controls for voice, uh, voice calls and stuff of that nature, but overall you get a pretty full set of controls from the earpiece themselves, which kind of mitigates the need to use your phone to control your media playback or your calls. Battery life on these is basically the biggest issue that I have. One, it doesn't really last that long. I get about three and a half hours or so, depending on my listening volume. Um, you cannot use these independently. So 
only the right earbud can be used on its own or if you're using both the signal goes to the right earbud and then it's relayed over to the left earbud in this day and age now with truly wireless earphones constantly being improved this is a very outdated technology you have a lot of truly wireless such as the power beats pro that i have here that can simultaneously connect to the source so you can use either the left or the right earpiece to answer a call listen to music watch a video you're not dependent on whether the right earpiece is outside of the case so as a result you are literally limited to that three and a half hour battery life whereas with a power beats pro back here you can use either earpiece so Basically, the battery life on the Power Beats Pro is about nine hours per charge, which is insane. So technically, you can get about 18 hours if you use either earpiece and mono connectivity. So the battery life on these is pretty poor. Um, the charging case holds two more charges, so you can theoretically get about, say, 12 hours of usage. Um, it's not really that good in this day and age for a truly wireless. Also, there's a lot of issues with the battery drain, whereas when you put the earpieces in the case, they somewhat still pull power from the case. And as a result, when the case's battery is dead, the earpiece will now turn back on because the earpieces believe that they're no longer in the case. And as a result, they will connect to your device and start playing music. It's just, you can kind of see where Sennheiser struggles in terms of getting the feature set down, getting the, you know, like the software aspect down. They got the sound quality because, you know, Sennheiser is well known for their sound, but you can see where they struggle. And that is essentially the whole well-roundedness of the product. So battery is the biggest issue I have with these. Um, overall, I don't really have the charging case issue problem because I usually charge these every day. Um, I'm pretty much at my work desk. I have USB-C cables all over the place at my uh, work desk and at home. So these are usually on the charger every night. So the case really doesn't die, but it's the actual usage time of the air pieces being at four hours, theoretically, but I get about three and a half, which is really poor. Um, that's the biggest issue that I have with the momentums. Call quality is actually pretty good with these. Um, it's not the best for loud scenarios. You're gonna definitely have a lot of outside feedback pumped into the line and the other person on the end of the line is gonna hear that, but for moderate to quiet uh, environments, these do a pretty good job. They pick up your voice pretty well. Um, yeah, the call quality on these is decent, it's usable. I wouldn't buy these for that, but it's not one of the bad things which is the usual trend with a lot of bluetooth headphones it's decent it's usable now most importantly sound quality and this is why i absolutely love these things they sound really really good um the tonal balance is overall relatively smooth across the entire frequency spectrum bass is slightly elevated but it's very nice in terms of its tuning it doesn't really elevate in the the upper bass and the mid bass so much so it's more around the sub bass that the elevation occurs so it doesn't really impede into the mid range and muddy up that frequency response now the tonal balance in the mid range is absolutely wonderful it's warm it's rich it does have a bit of an uh, attenuation a more of a heft that it gives to the lower mid range and the vocals in that region so vocals come through very robust very full it's not accurate but it's very engaging and warm and smooth sounding um, there is a dip in the lower treble upper mid-range area and i do really like that especially with iems because it really reduces that sense of uh that sense of harshness or that sense of uh screeching that it you sometimes get with iems because of the close proximity of the drivers to the ears so it does contribute to that nice warm luscious and smooth sound now this is all with very good detail and clarity so the sound isn't kind of you know like muddled over each other or kind of mushed up it still has very good separation very good imaging and the overall sound is very clear it's just a very nice warm engaging and luscious sound experience treble is quite nicely extended and that really helps to prevent 
these from sounding closed in and muffled because the upper treble is very nicely extended. So that gives that presence and that air back to the actual sound signature. So overall, these are quite a, a warm with a very touch of a treble sparkle and upper uh, treble extension. Very good sound Sennheiser. I really love these. And overall, these are my favorite sound in truly wireless um, in-ears that I've used by far. I've used a ton. Sorry, I haven't really reviewed them. I'm going to start to get back into that. Uh, the next up is going to be the Power Beats Pro. But overall, these are my favorite sounding truly wireless earphones. But they're not my favorite overall because these excel in sound. But overall, they're pretty weak compared to the competition. And the weakness is the battery. The fact that these cannot be connected to the source independently with the earpieces so you must use the right earpiece on its own and the audio has to go to the right earpiece and then relay over to the left earpiece um, there's other little intricate details that i prefer with other earbuds but generally speaking get these if sound is your only priority and you can deal with the rather poor battery life and the fact that you can't uh, use these independently in case you want to casually use them and Pretty much, these are a pretty good product because the problems that they do have, if you really just care about sound, um, they're not that big of an issue. But if you're using these as like your daily driver, you're gonna run into these issues, especially the battery life and those other issues that I mentioned with the Bluetooth connectivity and stuff of that nature. So if I have not covered something in this review, uh, let me know. I will try to answer them to the best of my ability. Thanks for watching guys, later.